Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Graham Noble, Sarah Cowgill, Tim Donner, and Joe Schaefer. And this is Liberty Nation's online news program. Deep thoughts, our conservative panel offers some personal reflections, meditations, and just plain crazy concepts. So fasten your seatbelt, folks. All righty. Well, time for deep thoughts with so much going on in the 24-7 news cycle spinning like a top. Let's take a moment for reflection. Tim, what stuck in your head this week in terms of culture and politics? Well, I was reading a book by a guy named, an author named John Eldridge, and there was a quote in there that speaks to, speaks to the difference between Trump and typical politicians is a quote from a, someone right, named- let's, let's see the book. What's the name Jerry of the book? Pierce. Well, the name of the book is Becoming a King. You can see it a little bit there. But this passage doesn't necessarily refer to kingship, but it says, there are many people who think they want to be matadors, only to find themselves in the ring with 2,000 pounds of bull bearing down on them and then discover that what they really wanted was to wear the tight pants and hear the crowd roar. <laughs> Is that not the typical politician that wants the tight pants and the roar of the crowd, but they don't want to actually stand for anything, and they cannot take the heat of 2,000 pounds of bull descending on them? Donald ah. Trump can do it. I've seen Graham in those tight pants, and it's scary. I don't want to see anybody, no, any no, politician no. or we, any one we, of us. We don't need to see anybody on Cap Capitol Hill in tight pants either. All right, right. deep thoughts, Graham, go. Well, mine, you know, my uh, ongoing greatest concern right now is the speed at which the November election is going to be resolved. You know, now basically people are starting to say, look, it's really getting to the point where we may not know the result on the evening of November 3rd or the early morning of November 4th. It may be days, it may be, uh, it may be weeks. I think that is incredibly dangerous for this country. Uh, th nobody wins when you've got that kind of delay to a presidential election, especially, and I hate to say this because it seems that every presidential election, we all say, this is the most, most consequential. Important. But you know what? Maybe this one really is because because never has there been such a huge difference and never has there been such animosity between the two sides. So I really believe that this election is, in fact, probably the most consequential presidential election in living memory. And for for us to be waiting days or even weeks to get the result, I believe that unless the uh, unless the results that come in on the evening of November 3rd are just razor, razor thin gap between the two sides. I believe that the candidate who looks as if they're going to lose, whether it is Mr. Trump or Mr. Biden, they need to do the right thing and concede um, because we cannot have a delay of, of, of weeks to find, to find the result. Country will fall apart. And that won't happen. And that's, and that's too bad. They're, they're already prepping for why no we are no not way. having it. I think uh, if anything, yeah, if anything, Joe Biden will never concede. Everybody on the left, from Nancy Pelosi to all kinds of other people who are leftists, are basically saying, don't ever concede. No there may never be a concession. I mean, Axios is running a story. They, I thought they used to be somewhat a journalistically credible, but now they're they're peddling this story that on election night that it's going to look like Trump won in a landslide, whereas in fact, once all the votes are counted, once yeah. all the mail-in ballots are assembled and counted, that in fact, Joe Biden will win. They're, they're putting that out there now. Yeah, they're setting the, the, they're setting the absolute stage for all of us, little voters, you know, that want to want to know what happened on election night to wait in limbo for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, which will create more unrest, more civil unrest, more violence in the streets. It's, they're not gonna, no one's gonna concede on election night, I fear. Joe. Uh, deep thoughts. I, I wrote a couple articles this week covering Bi what Biden's actions. And I say this with no, um, not in a light or, or uh, just thrown off way. I watched that 
bizarre event in Pittsburgh two or three times in its entirety. I watched his presser in Delaware to see him answer questions from the press for about a half hour. And I'm telling you, Joe Biden does not look well. He, he's getting worse. He looked so demonstrably tired in that Q&A in Delaware. There were no major missteps. He didn't say anything wrong, but he wasn't asked any surprising questions, nothing that would make him think quick on his feet. And he was noticeably sighing and like fatigue, real fatigue uh, halfway through it. I, I truly think, I'm saying it's probably not going to happen, but it is not out of the realm of possibility that he's not going to make it to November. He's just not going to make it. It's, I can't see him doing three debates. I don't see him being physically up for it. And this is a much, much bigger problem than people are letting on. He, he's getting worse. He really is. And Democrats have a major problem on their hands. They got to hide their presidential candidate until November. And I don't think they can do it. That's a really good point. And I, I've written extensively about his two neurological episodes, many of which uh, most Americans don't know about. If you do a Google search, they're actually hard to find. Um, you know, and, and I think this stuff, you know, wears on you after a while. Sarah, I know you're someone with many, many deep thoughts. Can you oh. give us a pearl? Yeah, I'm just wondering where the heck Mike Lavinetti is when we need him, um, other than his uh, disappearance, uh, much like the former vice president. I've been working on a piece this week about um, perhaps people funding rioters traveling across the country and, and uh, going from city to city, like uh, the, the Kenosha report just came out, that a, a huge percentage weren't even of the arrests weren't even people that were local. So that's what I've been working on this week and it's kind of weighing a little bit heavy on me. All right, well, I will close us out. My deep thought goes, takes us all the way back to Crosby, Stills, and Nash, that song, Deja Vu. You know, we have all been here before. Well, not literally, of course, but America has seen all this before, most notably in 1968. Many parallels. If you really consider the civil unrest, the election between Nixon and Humphrey, the buildings on college campuses that were taken over. But you know, in many ways, when you watch that stuff from 68, it tends to be comforting because if we can make it through 1968, we can make it through 2020. And that's it for another edition of Truth TV. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember to look for Liberty Nation in your favorite search engine. Subscribe to our daily briefing and check out our new Roku channel. And remember, Liberty all the time and everywhere.